Good morning. I hope uh, studying for the exam over metabolism has gone well. Uh, what I'm going to do today uh, is answer the, uh, the question that I got over email. I uh, was asked to just walk through glycolysis and kind of highlight uh, the important steps. So I'm going to do my best to kind of make a, a decent drawing here on the screen. So this is the cell membrane, or for muscle. It's specifically the sarcoloma. Um, and so to start glycolysis, of course, we need some type of sugar, uh, which is going to be called glucose. Okay. Uh, later in the semester, we'll talk about how the signals uh, get glucose into the cell, but just know this for now, is that we have ways of regulating when glucose comes into the cell. When we want it in the cell, we send these uh, open channel transporters in. Glucose can then come from outside the cell, inside the skeletal muscle cell. At this point, it is inside the muscle as a 6-carbon ring sugar. So that's why I draw it as a hexagon. Uh, and uh, I'll make the point here as well is that um, as long as it is in this six carbon sugar, it has the ability, if it wants to, to just effectively go right back out and leave the cell. Okay. So obviously we don't want that uh, to occur. What we want to do is we want to keep this, um, this molecule in the cell. So the way that we do that is by adding Um, the way that we do that is by adding a phosphate on. So we take an ATP, we essentially take a phosphate group off of that muscle, and we add it here. So now we have glucose with a phosphate, which has now changed the name. We now have glucose 6 phosphate. Right. So ultimately, we are losing a net ATP, right? We are uh, providing a phosphate group. So if you're thinking of the net score right now, right now we're at a negative 1 for ATP production during glycolysis. So again, the important step of this first ATP uh, by putting phosphate on is to essentially block glucose from leaving the cell, trap it in, so that we can do one of two things. Glucose 6-phosphate now has two potential paths. It can go into glycogen for, for storage in the muscle, or it can proceed down glycolysis. Since I mentioned glyco uh, um, glycogen, let me go ahead and do my best to draw a glycogen molecule, right? So it's this kind of like tree branch looking structure, all made of, of little glucose 6-phosphate molecules. When we cleave off one, what happens is we cleave off a glycogen 6-phosphate or glucose 6-phosphate from glycogen. Right? So if you think about this now, our net ATP when using glycogen, we are still at zero for our, our net using glycogen. Right? And that pattern is going to persist for the entire pattern. So in general, we're going to net one more ATP because we don't have this uh, energy investment phase to ultimately trap glucose into the muscle cells. Uh, the next step is to add a second phosphate, it's terrible, is to add a second phosphate group. Okay. So in this step, the enzyme PFK or phosphofructokinase is responsible for putting a second phosphate group onto Glucose 
Um, we've changed the structure a little bit a few times, so this is actually fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Okay. So we now have two phosphorylation groups. So the importance of this step is uh, twofold. One, now that we added the second phosphate group on, we are now committed this glucose molecule that we started with into glycolysis. It can no longer really go into uh, glycogen, and so we are now going to break it down through the pathways of glycogen, through um, uh, glycolysis. And this is important, right, because we wouldn't want to waste an ATP. We don't want to waste energy if we're not going to use it for glycogen. For that reason, PFK is considered a rate-limiting enzyme, right? It is, uh, one, going to determine the overall rate of the reaction. So if we increase the uh, activity of PFK and we make more fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, uh, then glycolysis will proceed even faster and of course vice versa if that happens. So PFK is the rate limiting enzyme step. It's going to control how much glucose funnels through glycolysis and the rate at which it does so. Okay. So now if we look at this, we have a six carbon sugar with two uh, phosphate groups on them. If we go back to our net tally here, we are now at minus one, a total of minus two. From our glycogen, we are now at just a minus one for glycogen. All right, so the next step is to ultimately split this in half and uh, now make a three carbon molecule. So now everything below this step, we're ultimately going to uh, double, okay? So uh, the next beneficial thing that we will produce is an NADH. And the same here. I'm going to shorthand it, but you get an NADH and an NAD here. I'm also just going to make simplified. We don't need to know all these pathways. Ultimately, there's going to be Two pathways that generate ATP. All right, so now let's go back to our, our net numbers if we want to calculate them. So now we're adding one. So we were at negative two. We now add one. So we're now at negative one. Now we add another. We're now at zero. If we come to this side, we add one. Now we're at positive one, and now we are at positive two. Right. The last step then is to have these converted into pyruvate. All right, so uh, that will functionally end glycolysis. We'll have a net two if we break down glucose. I'll do our net really fast from our uh, glycogen. So here we were at negative one. Now we go to zero, then to one, then to two, then to three. So net from glycogen is three ATP. We also produce two NAD, H's. 
These NADHs can then go into the mitochondria, into the electron transport chain, pass their hydrogen ions and electrons uh, into complex one, uh, and ultimately uh, prompt 10 protons across the um, electron transport uh, chain gradient. Those then re-enter into uh, the um, uh, into uh, the mitochondrial matrix through ATP synthase to generate ATP. Okay. Uh, if we are unable to pass NADH into the electron train uh, and use those electrons there, what happens is we start to run out of NAD in the cell because we have too much NADH. So what can then happen is we can convert into into lactate. And when we convert pyruvate into lactate by the enzyme LDH, what happens is we recycle NADH. So this produces NAD from NADH. And then therefore, this NAD can then go back in and be recycled and be used here in this, uh, in this glycolysis reaction as well. So I hope drawing it out helped. Um, if there's any more questions, let me know before you take your exam, and I'm happy to help.